Welcome back to another amazing episode of GEMS Podcast. I'm your host, Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today is Dr. Marnie Hill Bartararo. And here is a bit about Dr. Marnie. When you hear her bio, you will know that she is a woman on a mission. She is an award winning and celebrated author, speaker, and educated. She earned her doctorate in education and completed postdoctoral studies at Harvard after a very successful and rewarding 35-year career as a high school special education teacher with 12 years as a university adjunct professor. Marnie's life was forever changed after experiencing numerous trauma-induced STEs, also known as Spiritually Transformative Encounters. Marnie's 2020 best book, award-winning spiritual fiction, God Came to My Garage Sale, is prominently endorsed by James Redfield, best-selling author of the Celestine Prophecy series of books among celebrity psychic mediums and founding directors of IANDS, International Association for near Debt Studies. Marnie is a lover of animals, nature, music, and world travel, who handles life challenges with love and compassion. She also does some amazing things, but without further ado, please welcome Dr. Marnie to GEMS Podcast. Oh, hey, Genesis. Thank you so much for having me here. My pleasure, Dr. Marnie. And we all know that a bio is just a bio and you could only put so many words due to character limitations. So give us a fun fact of who el- who is Marnie on the forefront as well as behind the scenes that maybe your own followers don't even know. Well, let's see. I, I'm an author living in the Caribbean and I have... Um, a beautiful life here. And like all of us, I have a journey that got me here. And I believe I've really gone from pain to power. And a lot of that is just becoming aware um, of your own life, your own traumas, you know, but also evaluating where you are right now and where you'd like to be. So I am um very excited um, because my books are doing very well and I'm able to meet so many wonderful people like yourself. So thanks for having me here. My pleasure. And thank you for just gracing us with your presence and just really unpacking some of your story because it takes a lot of courage and bravery as well as vulnerabilities because sometimes when we think about our stories and we think about going from pain to power sometimes we have to relive the pain a little bit to share our experiences so it can intersect and help other people and today we're really going to unpack going from pain to power, the trauma experiences, but we're also going to weave in spirituality, which is what prompted you to writing your book, God Came to My Garage Sale. So let's dive in. When you think about going from pain to power, sometimes people ask themselves, how can you go from pain to power? Because all I see is darkness. All I see is hurt. All I see is this emotional roller coaster, but I don't see the end in mind. And do you think it's because they haven't had that paradigm shift yet, or they haven't tapped into who they are internally and manifested that externally? Oh my gosh, what a great question. You really covered a lot there. I I think that going from pain to power is a process. And so if someone does, like you said, find themselves in a dark place where things aren't going so well, they still need to embrace that because, you know, acknowledging that is very, very important. You know, you need to actually be real with yourself and, you know, realize that you have have gone through a lot, whatever the challenge is, you know, in my case, it was domestic violence. um, And it was making a choice to leave a a toxic marriage after 27 years, and just basically having to reinvent my life, you know, completely. Um, But there are people, especially the last two years that have had so many different challenges, where their life has changed, and they need to acknowledge that, Uh, but it's very important to take some time to reflect on where you've been, 
um, or where you're at now, but also to kind of take the steps towards self-actualization. So take the steps towards coming into your own and finding your passions and surrounding yourself with people and situations that serve your higher good. So it's nothing that happens overnight. It is definitely a, a process. And if you handle life's challenges with love and honesty, goodness, compassion, you will be on the right path. You know, you might, um, you know, uh, have hiccups along the way. And yes, you do have to relive some of the things you've gone through in order to just come to terms with it. But that's okay. That's part of the journey. And you need to cut yourself some slack, you know, and realize that the people that, you know, you are looking at that have gone from pain to power, it was a process for them. It just didn't happen overnight. Uh, but it's, it's so worth it to do the work, to do the research on whatever the issue is that you're dealing with, become knowledgeable. And with that knowledge, you can make some decisions for yourself to steer yourself in the right path. Lots of times when people find themselves in challenging situations, they feel isolated and alone. You know, even if they have someone close to them that they can talk with, it's not always that easy. You're really the one that's going through what you're going through. And you need to be the one to love yourself and to take care of yourself and move towards you know, the positive and making a life for yourself. Beautiful, because whenever you have that really, that really still, small, quiet time, it really allows you the ability to self-reflect. It allows you the ability to ponder and it allows you to sit with your thoughts and sit with your feelings and your emotions because they are real and you cannot dismiss how you're feeling. You cannot dismiss your overall emotions. You can't dismiss what your body is telling you because we are all human and we have those human instincts. But if you ask yourself, even though I'm in this position and I'm going through this pain, how is it going to work for my good? How is this pain going to help me walk out my purpose? Is this purpose aligned with my mission? And is my mission tied to a bigger um, reach and a cause? And if you start to ask yourself those questions and then you begin to reverse engineer it, you'll start to see that that pain and that problem is so minute in comparison to other things that are going on around us. And it's not to discredit where you are in life, but we all know that the dark seasons don't always last, just like the storms don't always last for forever. And if you think about this metaphorically, remember, it always gets darker before it gets brighter. So even though we go through a thunderstorm, what happens after a thunderstorm? The clouds begin to get brighter, the sun comes out and radiate, and you start to see a light that is starting to beam in. And that light is going to illuminate our pathways and our pathways are going to get clearer, bigger and brighter because the past does not depict our future. And what we went through is just going to be a male, a male or mile stepping stone for us to continue building our pathway to success. And one thing that I like about what you said is, you said, even though you went through a domestic relationship and marriage for 25 years, that's a very long time. You still found your way out of that situation. You're a survivor. You wrote books so you could help other people because now they're able to read a glimpse of your story. And then you tapped into who Dr. Marnie is by finding your spiritual side. And what did that look like for you? You went through a, a spiritual journey. You went through an awakening and you had a personal touch or connection with the higher power that you believe in. Most definitely. And I, I would like to, you, you said so much there and so beautifully and so eloquently kind of summed it up for to give hope and to inspire 
other people when they are in challenging time. I love when you talked about the clouds and the sun and that things do change. You know, we, we, we can't change other people. We can't change a lot of circumstances that we find ourselves in. Uh, but we can change ourselves and how we look at it and how we choose to respond, not necessarily react, but to respond to these challenges and that they are all part of the journey. Um, yes, I was, I, you know, I was through this trauma, um, which could just engulf all negativity. It didn't for me. I actually had a garage sale that was the inspiration for my 2020 Best Books Award winning spiritual fiction that you had mentioned in the intro. But during this very kind of dark and challenging time when I could have been sad and angry and mad and revengeful, um, which really aren't part of who I am. I'm, a, I'm basically a very happy, fun-loving, accepting, you know, honest person. Um, but during this garage sale that I had, I had some encounters, some, some experiences that were very magical and spiritual in nature that really prompted me on a journey um, past the garage sale to really research near-death experiences and research, you know, is there, um, a, is there more to this earth than just we live and die? Are we guided by divine? You know, is there such thing as a spiritual awakening? And I, I believe there is. I, I actually have an atheist background. So I'm someone who actually needs more proof and more evidence than most people. You know, just having that blind faith is is not as natural for me um, because I do a lot of research and searching out and trying to get answers. And, you know, I have been validated over and over and over again, not only personally through some experiences, but just in reading the testimonials of so many other people that have gone through dark, challenging times and actually had kind of a spiritual awakening where they, it puts them on a path of goodness and, and towards the light. And, you know, a lot of times these awakenings happen after experiencing some trauma, whether it's the loss of a child, you know, in the physical or at, due to parental alienation, you know, just having a loving being ripped away from you, or whether it's you died in a car accident or in a hospital operating room, but then somehow were revived and could come back and talk about your experiences. And the thousands of people that have talked about ch these challenging um, physical, emotional times that led them to a more positive outlook on things, they, it, they describe it as a journey and that you really do need to experience the negativity to really appreciate the positivity. So yes, it, if you if you quiet your mind and do some self reflection, you know ab about your situation, you'd be amazed at some of the signs and synchronicities that will come your way that could open up your awareness that you know you are being guided and that you were meant to go through the things you went through. Because it's all good and love, love is that highest vibration, and um, and that is a common thread with so many survivors of of you know the people that really do make it, um, and and come on you know find their voice to be able to share with others and have these conversations. They they've experienced that, but they've also experienced the journey to to goodness and power and light. That is beautiful. And I want to um, dive a little bit deeper there and share my experience because who knew that we were going to get into this intersection? Dr. Marnie, you're coming from an atheist background. I'm coming from a religious and spiritual background based on the home environment that I grew up into. And here we are talking about spiritual awakening and how that came about from trauma. And I 
I have been on the journey where I grew up in a spiritual and religious household. Then I questioned God, but it wasn't until I had to question God for myself and do some soul searching to say, is God even real? But then things came back into manifestation and came back into remembrance after I went through a near death experience in lieu of a car accident where my car was hit from the back. It spun around three times and hit a concrete pillar on the highway. My glasses flew off my face. The front of my car was bashed in. The back of my car was bashed in. The um, driver's side of the door was banged in and they had to pry the door open. And they said, by God, it was a miracle that you lived because we saw this accident five years ago. And the accident that they referred to was the same accident that a guy that I went to high school with who coincidentally lived on my street had a similar accident and he died on the scene. His name was Danny. And they said, luckily you were wearing a seatbelt and that saved your life. So that let me know that, okay, there was a guardian angel or there was someone watching over me that put a hedge of protection to keep me here on earth because there was still a mission and purpose that needed to be fulfilled. That was one incident. So that was a spiritual awakening for me to let me know you need to get back on track. The second incident was the story that my mom told me whenever she was having me. So as she was going through childbirth and labor with me, my heart rate was dropping and had the nurse not come in at the divine timing, I would have not made it. So I would have passed in my mother's stomach. So that happened. And there's other stories that I have witnessed in lieu of my family members, as well as gone through in my personal life that really helped me reflect. It helped me have that self-actualization, but it also took me to a place where I strengthened my faith because after you go through so much trauma, hurt, loss, and for example, that could be grief, losing a loved one, losing a, a friend, a pet, losing your job, going mm-hmm. through maybe narcissistic relationships, going through failed relationships that didn't work. I had to go through some failed ones before I married my my king, which is my husband now. Just going through different things over and over, you start to say, why is the dark cloud blooming over me? Why the heck won't this cloud just move? Because I need to have peace. But it starts by how are you looking at things? What is your perspective? What are you speaking about your situation? What are you doing differently that is going to cause positive energy, positive vibration? And are you trusting in yourself just like you're trusting in your maker? And this is not to dive into religion because we're all entitled to our own beliefs and opinions. But the fact that you and I could intersect from different backgrounds really shows diversity equity, inclusion, and belonging. And we're tying it all together to package it up, to talk about how can you go from pain to power via trauma? How can that trauma enlighten spiritual awakening? And how can you become the woman or man that you are today by going through that trauma? Because it's not easy, but the beauty is that you had a breakthrough, you were broken, but you made it through. Yes, yes. So Dr. Marnie, what are some tips that you have used to help you on your pain to power journey? Well, you know, in the beginning, you are focused basically on your survival, you know, your survival needs, you know, basic shelter, food, employment, things like that. And, and you know, in, in, in my case, that was very challenging because I lost everything, you know, became homeless um, and all my money was depleted. And, uh, you know, just you don't when you're dealing with an abuser situation and some of your audience has has, you know, you, you they try to take everything they can away from you, you know, but you can choose whether or not you're going to let that define you. And so I'd say in the beginning, you have to focus on your safety and survival. Then, you know, you need to kind of tie up whatever loose ends that you can. So if you are left with a lot of 
financial bills or, you know, situations that you need to take care of, you know, figure out what you need to do to either bring in more income or, um, you know, how you want to spend your time, but your focus should be in trying to get your, your affairs in order. And then when you're at that point, then you can start, you know, quieting your mind a little bit and, and reflecting on what you've been through, but also, and where you're at right now, but where you would like to be. And to get from one place to another just doesn't happen overnight. It takes some thought, but it also takes some very tangible goals and steps um, to, to get towards that. You know, uh, people don't achieve greatness overnight. They, they, there are a lot of steps that have to happen along the way and, you know, honor those steps and realize that that's part of your journey and be patient. And then in time, you can start to take care of yourself better physically. You know, many of us that have gone through challenging situations have been the caretakers of other people. And we can let ourselves go while we are tending to the needs of others because we want others to be happy and successful and to self real, you know, actualize, actualize. So I would say, turn, turn the gaze inward a little bit and focus on your own health, but not just your mental health, your physical health, you know, um, take a look at your, your, what you're putting in your body. You know, I, I'm fortunate. I live in the Caribbean where I can grow a lot of my own foods, you know, organic foods year round, or we have, it's very different here. We don't have like the big box stores and all of that kind of thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm in a fortunate situation that goes along with my values that I like to go to farmer's market and, and, you know, um, just get good, you know, pesticide free organic foods that are grown from the earth. And so you focus on that, you focus on your sleep, you know, to try to get restorative sleep. So many of us that have gone through challenges, our minds are racing all the time. I mean, we have a hard time, you know, when our head hits the pillow, actually closing our eyes and getting some deep sleep. And so you need to decide on you know, and do a little research on what will work for your body and your mind to quiet yourself to be able to get the sleep that you need. Exercise is very important. And it doesn't mean you have to put on a matching outfit and go jump up and down at a gym. Exercise can just be, you know, getting out in nature and taking some walks, you know, again, living in the Caribbean, I'm swimming in the ocean every day. Um, I live on many acres in the rainforest, so I'm always exploring my environment and I am getting exercise really the natural way. Um, you know, and of course, when I feel motivated, I, I do a little bit more. Um, but taking care of yourself is, is one part of it. And then the next step would be finding your passions and what brings you joy. And I have actually found writing to be extremely therapeutic um, in understanding what I've gone through and, and putting it all together, but actually sort of, um, you know, uh, like in my True Deceit False Love series, which is, which is a four book series, um, you know, the first book is on terms just to bring awareness. And in my case, it's to domestic violence, narcissistic abuse, and parental alienation. But there are many other authors out there, depending on whatever your issue is, um, that you could find some research and information to just kind of increase your knowledge. You know, knowledge is power. And then books two and three are actually a poetry book. I have really discovered poetry as a real a uh, way of freely expressing not only like some thoughts that go through my mind, but even other people's situations. And so the poetry book that I have put out, the second book in the series, um, anyone can pick it up and relate to it. So it's written, the poems are not just from um, the perspective of a wife that's, you know, escaped an abusive situation. It could be 
a male that left a situation. It could be a child. It could be a grandparent. And it could be someone from work. You know, we, we many of us have work situations that are challenging. And so um, the poetry has been very, very healing for me. So I found my passion. The third book is a workbook you know, for others, if they find that writing is helpful to them, to kind of give them a framework to just write out, um, you know, their, what they've gone through and go, you know, and where they want to be. So, so just to kind of recap, you know, the journey, you know, take care of your safety and security needs first, educate yourself as to what happened, you know, bring awareness to what, what you've gone through, research how other people have handled it, then look inward and take care of your own body and mind, and then follow your passions and your dreams and do what makes you happy. Um, and, and in doing that, so many people bring these honest conversations to the forefront. And you, you know, even if you only help one person, you're inspiring others to see the light from the dark and to find their own path, you know, to just living a happier, better life for themselves. That is beautiful. And if I could add to that, self-love is the best love. So if you're watching this or listening to it, I want you to take your arms <laughs> and hug yourself and release that positive energy and vibration. Because when you love yourself, you're whole and you're complete. Remember, mind, body, and soul. Your body is your temple. So Marnie talked about health and wellness. So nutrition, as well as exercise. Mm -hmm. What are you feeding your body? How does your body feel after you put in those things? And how are you making sure that your body is loose and limber? What type of exercises bring you joy and fulfillment? Because exercise should not be seen as a chore. It should be seen as a way to get your body up and moving while you're also having fun grooving it. <laughs> so whether you like to do yoga, Krav Maga, walking, jumping, Zumba, hit high intensity interval training. Those are just some fun things. And you could take fun activities and hobbies and turn it into a way for you to exercise and keep your body moving. And if you're interested in learning more, I'm in. I'm also in the health and wellness space in lieu of my business. And all of that information could be found out on in my briefcase. Another thing that's so important is when you're going through life circumstances and challenges, tap in with a paid professional if needed, whether it is a coach, a counselor, a psychologist, or maybe a healthcare practitioner. Whenever I was going through my trauma, acupuncture was very helpful for me and it was therapeutic. And it was a way where I could just zone out for an hour. The needles were inside of me and my body was going through a restorative as well as a repairing process. And um, actually people that have gone through challenging times, um, you know, your mental state can actually carry over and impact you physically so that you might start to be developing autoimmune issues or, you know, uh, mobility issues and things that you never had before. But when you get your mind in a very good place and then you practice the self-love, um, which is an overused term, but it's so, so important. And it, it, you know, at least gives people the idea they need to focus inward some. Then you'd be amazed at how the physical ailments will just subside because you've gotten yourself into a healthy place emotionally. Yes, and that drives into the next point of mindfulness. And mindfulness can be holistically, whether you're doing mindful eating, making sure that you are listening to your body as you're eating. Are you chewing the foods? How is the food making you feel? And are, it, are you listening when your body is telling you to stop eating and you're full? That also goes into intuitive eating and then mindfulness also with your mind completely. Just getting away from distractions, whether it's your cell phone, your computer, 
social media, maybe your family, and just going to that quiet place in your house where you could be alone with your thoughts. You could pray, you could meditate, you could journal, or you could just take a 30 minute nap and just shut down. And as you shut down, you'll feel refueled, recharge and rejuvenate it. Those are my three R's in order to help you do the other three R's, relax, relate, and release. And Dr. Marnie, as we begin to wind down, what is your call to action that you want the listeners and viewers to gravitate from hearing you speak about going from pain to power from a trauma aspect and spiritual awakening? You know, I I would just say that realize it's a journey. And if you handle these challenges with love, compassion, goodness, and honesty, you're on your way. But you do have to have a call to action, like you were saying. It's good to believe these things and think these things, but you actually have to follow through and and do some of the work. Um, Some of the work could be just reflecting back into your own upbringing and intergenerational issues that you might have had as a as a child you know your own core wounds that can contribute to where you're at today or some of the challenges that you have and then I'm just a big believer in research and uh, hearing other people's stories and finding out how how do they handle things and I I love having tangible tools for that and that's you know, why I was so motivated, not only for my own healing, but to inspire others that they can get through some of these challenges. And, you know, with that true deceit, false love series that I have, and and this is just the first book of four. Um, But, you know, having some awareness, but having something tangible that you can have actually action steps to move towards is very, very helpful. But definitely, like you said, quieting your mind in any way that you can. And that was really hard for me to do. That did not just come naturally because, you know, I was a high school teacher for 35 years. I taught college. I raised a family. I I was busy doing lemonade stands and art projects and nature hikes with my kids and volunteering. And and I was a lector at church. I mean, there was a lot of things I was involved with. So in my previous life, you know, I was very busy. That's probably why it took so many years for my light bulb to go on and realize, wait a minute, I need to to leave this, this marriage. I mean, I stuck it out much longer than I probably should have, but that's all part of the journey too. But, you know, I think that, you know, all that plus having some tangible tools and research is extremely helpful. And, and that's why I'm really hoping, you know, my, my four book series can be um, just one of many tools that people can use. And, and actually, all of my books have been very prominently endorsed by either celebrities or major influencers in whatever, you know, spirituality or, or family trauma, you know, whatever the topic is. Um, and so sometimes just those endorsements, looking at those people and checking them out and what they have to offer as far as advice or actual tools to help you move past whatever your issue is, um, it can kind of lead, you know, you to open your eyes to other things. You know, just like your podcast is amazing. And I have been tuning into many of your interviews. They are so varied with so many different guests, so many different topics. And I'm just so one, it's just wonderful I found you. And I'm sure your audience feels the same way because, you know, it's not only you helping people and bringing these conversations, you know, making them more transparent and bringing them to the forefront, but also your, your audience can check out some of your other guests and what they have done, and it could lead to even, you know, more awareness. So it, it's, it's all just um, very, very helpful out there to have these kind of conversations. And thank you so much, uh, Dr. Marnie, for your support and just everything that you do and just really getting behind the mission of GEMS podcast. And how can the listeners and viewers connect with you? What is your website? 
Uh, my website is actually the name of my spiritual fiction. So it's www.godcametomygaragesale.com. So on my website, you can read about me, the author bio, you can read about my books or the, the endorsers that have written praise. Um, but I also have a happening section that I keep up to date with um, my various TV appearances, book signings, podcast interviews. Um, but I also, in that happening section, highlight other people, other influencers and what they're doing. So it's actually a wealth of resources um, if you check out my website. So that's where they can find me. And that's amazing, Dr. Marnie. And for all of those listening and watching, all of Dr. Marnie's information will be in the show notes. So definitely read and connect with her. And just as a recap, we talked about going from pain to power in lieu of trauma, as well as tapping into spiritual awakening. We want you to be who you desire to be. We want you to level up. We want you to step outside of your comfort zone and take the action today to secure a better future. And remember, it's not just about you, but it's about the lives that you are going to come into connection with. And if you touch one life, you've done your job because you don't know who that person is going to go on and touch. And that's where we see the ripple effect and the domino effect. So really believe in who you are. Rise up with boldness, courageous creativity, and be who you were destined to be, uniquely you, because there is only one you and the world needs you. So until we chat next time, peace love, and lots of blessings. Go out there and have yourself an amazing day. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast where you're listening and follow us on our YouTube channel, Gems with Genesis Amaris Kent. Have a great one.